Hey there everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm That Scottish Nerd that brings you Pokemon TCG content as well as gaming and entertainment related videos, so if any of those things interest you, be sure to subscribe down below as I do upload videos multiple times a week. And I do have a very special theme deck Tuesday for you this week as I took part in the international theme deck tournament hosted by Brave Birds as you can see here. I did manage to come 5th as I am on the right of the screen here and Philippe piloted the Unseen Depth deck featuring Kyogre and Empoleon in order to win the whole tournament and this is thanks to the fact that the two Charizard decks are very popular in the meta right now and myself I piloted the Soaring Storm deck featuring Dragonite which was also extremely popular as you can see and unfortunately I wasn't able to win, I only came 5th but I did get a whole host of awesome prize cards thanks to the sponsors as there was a massive prize pool surprisingly for a theme deck tournament. So let's get into the review and deck profile of the winning deck Unseen Depth and the reasons in which it won and just showing off how powerful it is. So this is the deck itself, there's not anything particularly fantastic or special about any one card, it's all a combination and culmination of the meta coming together so that this deck can be any deck that it comes up against. We'll start it off with the Empoleon here since it is the primary attacker. The Empoleon here has the recall attack which is the main attack that you're going to be using allowing you to use any of the previous evolutions attacks just for that one colorless energy you don't have to fulfill the energy cost you just get to use the one colorless energy to use recall and then you can use any of these previous evolution attacks it also has an attack for two energy which does 130 and then discard all energy from this pokemon which can be effective for hitting into the active but mainly we're going to be focusing on that recall, especially using the Prinplops attack here, Direct Dive, which does 100 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon, and then you have to discard all energy, but when we're only discarding one energy, that snipe for 100 damage on any of your opponent's bench is extremely useful for taking out those evolving Pokemon before they're even able to evolve. We also have a nice attack here on the Piplop, which does 80 damage, and if the defending Pokemon is basic, then it can't attack. So this can be useful for stalling, as well as just doing a nice efficient 80 damage for one energy. Now going across to some of the supporting Pokemon here, we have Pukimuku, which has Call for Family. Searching out two basics and picking them straight on your bench is great for setting up your board. We also have this other nice attacker and support Pokemon in the form of Kyogre. His high water attack for a color of energy gets two energy or water energy out of the discard pile and puts it on any of your Pokemon. It can put it on itself and power itself up or you can just use it to kind of stall for a turn with a big HP Pokemon and put two energy on any of your Pokemon on the board. You might want to set up an Ambipom here, put two energy onto that, as its bye bye throw attack allows you to deal 60 damage for each card that you discard from your hand, but you can only d discard up to two cards, which still can be great as dealing that 120 damage is very efficient against a lot of decks. And we also have the Golduck here, which does 80 damage for two energy, very efficient, and you also get to return an energy on it back into your hand. This combos nicely with the two copies of Draw Energy that we have in the deck. Draw Energy allows you to draw a card off the top of your deck, nice and simple, and it fulfills that colourless attack cost. And using it with Energy Loop here means that you can reuse it every single turn if you want to keep looping that energy. Finally for our Pokemon, we have a copy of Fion with that Whirlpool Suction ability, allowing you to force your opponent to switch the active with one of their bench. This can be great for knocking out something that they have on their bench, either through recall and sniping it, or just hitting into the active as a different Pokemon. We also have a host of pretty standard supporter cards, such as Cynthia How, Lily, Fan Club and Tate and Lisa. The standout supporter here though is the two copies of Roller Skater. You can discard a card from your hand and draw two cards, but if that card that you discard is an energy, you get to draw four cards. So it's very effective at drawing through your deck and you're always going to have energy since we do have 18 copies of it. Also to combo with this we have 
a copy of Viridian Forest, one of the few theme decks that actually feature a stadium card, but this is one of the best stadium cards that you could have in this format, as you're able to discard a card and search for an energy card. This is going to allow you to have that guaranteed energy every single turn, as well as just being able to thin your deck and make sure that you have better draws throughout the game. We are a little bit low on the item cards and Pokemon Search as we only have two copies of Pokemon Communication, but in combination with that Puka Miku's Call for Family, you should be able to set up very nice and easily, as well as just having the thick lines of evolutions, most of them being 3 2. Any kind of combination that a thick evolution line is very welcome here. So this is very well poised in the meta as you're a water deck, so you're hitting for weakness on all of the fire decks, the two Charizard decks, as well as Entei and any other kind of fire decks, as well as being able to snipe Pokemon on the bench before they evolve as I mentioned. And for the most part you're weak to grass apart from the Empoleon which is weak to lightning, so you're going to have a good time against the majority of those lightning based decks like the Soaring Storm and Storm Caller. Let's get into a couple of matches, be sure to give this video a like if you did enjoy it at any point. Starting off this matchup, we are up against one of the early X and Y theme decks, and that is the Xerneas theme deck. Unfortunately, we don't have a great start here, as we just have the Apom, but we did draw into that Ambipom, and we do also have the Energy, so going first, we will be able to start attacking on our second turn, which is great. And we also have a whole bunch of draw supporters here, so we're definitely going to have plenty of cards in our hand to use that bye-bye throw attack and deal 120 damage onto this Xerneas. But unfortunately this Xerneas also has 130 hit points, so we may actually opt to just discard one card, but we'll definitely see what we draw into here. I think we're going to go for a Cynthia so that we can just refresh this hand and try and get into a couple of basic Pokemon, hopefully some Piplop. We just get into the Theon, unfortunately, as well as the Viridian Forest. And seeing as my opponent has the double Xerneas, it's not really going to make a difference about which Xerneas we hit into here. Now, we'll definitely go for a bye bye throw attack. Just have to decide what cards we want to discard. I think we'll go for the double energy here. Since we have the Viridian as well as How, we might as well just discard the double energy deal our 120 damage and then on the following turn we can just discard the one card and that will deal the 60 damage for the knockout that we need. Now my opponent's going to be using the Geomancy attack which allows them to accelerate energy out of their deck onto two of their Pokemon but seeing as they only have one benched Pokemon they're only being able to accelerate one energy at a time. So that is definitely what they go for here and we draw into a Pokemon fan club which is a great pickup. We can definitely use that to get some of our Piplop, and that's what we're going to go and search for. We'll get double Piplop, we have prize one, but that's fine because we only need the two really. We have the Kyogres, as well as all the rest of our Empolio line. We're just missing the... oh we're man, we're missing a Golduck as well. But that's fine, we should be all good here with our Empoleons, as that is kind of the star of the deck with its recall attack. Now we just also have to decide what card we want to discard here. I think since we do have quite a thick line of the Empoleon, we could discard the Prinplop here. But also getting rid of the Viridian Forest doesn't seem terrible. Or alternatively we could just draw two cards, since my opponent isn't likely to actually get an attack off this turn. So kind of like just drawing two cards, since we're not really in a position to deal with the benched Xerneas right now. Since the Xerneas here does deal 100 damage with the Rainbow Spear attack and they have to discard an energy card and since it's going to be ready to attack us and our Ambipom only has 100 HP we're going to get Return Knocked Out if we actually go for the knockout here. So just drawing two cards, building up our hand a little bit and working towards some of our other Pokemon is going to be beneficial overall. And my opponent is also looking to do the same here. They get down the Spritzy from the looks of things. Oh no, it's a Jigglypuff, but they do have the Spritzy in the deck. I can't remember if it has Aromatis as well. There's a Aromatis which allows you to move very energy around the board, so the deck might have one of those, which could be interesting to play against. And we did see the Professor's Letter 
from my opponent, which is a great card to search out energy as well. I really miss that card. It's a shame that we only have energy search in the format now. But my opponent goes for the Geomancy once again, getting some more energy onto play. And we get the Prinplop Evolved, which is great. We have the How that we're definitely going to make use of here to draw three cards, all of them being energy, unfortunately. But we also have the Draw Energy, so we can use that to draw an additional card. Unfortunately, it is a Water Energy. Now, I do know for a fact that my opponent has a Stadium card in their deck. They have the Fairy Stadium, a Fairy Garden, I think it's called which gives their fairy Pokemon free retreat, so I don't want to put my Inferiority Forest down just yet. But I will go for the attack here and get the knockout, discarding our Puhu Muku. We only need to discard one card to deal that 60 damage for the knockout, and hopefully we're able to get into a useful card. We get a Prinplop, hopefully we get into a draw supporter so that we can find ourselves an Empoleon. I'll definitely be making use of our Fion here so that we can force up a different Pokemon from our opponent. Otherwise they're just going to be running through us with that Rainbow Spear attack doing 100 damage every single turn. As they have a surplus of energy, they have no problem discarding one every turn to use that attack. Now they did put down the Phantom, but it's not going to be a super good attacker overall. And they do get the knockout here with the Rainbow Spear attack, as we discussed. I just want to decide what Pokemon we want to promote. I think we might have to promote our Pitplop here, and go into the Primplop as well. Now we unfortunately just get a Psyduck, which isn't going to do us a whole lot of use. Our Primplop only has 80 HP, so it will be getting knocked out. And I think it's going to be in our best interest to actually just uh, go into our Psyduck here and allow this Pitplop to get knocked out. It is a bit unfortunate, but going in with a different attacker is going to be our best option. And I am actually going to put down the Viridian. I did say that I was going to hold on to it to counter their stadium, but I think we really need to start thinning energy out of the deck so that we can get some better draws going. We'll pass it over to my opponent and see what they come up with. They're most likely just going to be attaching energy and attacking us with Rainbow Spear. But you never know, they might have a supporter card up their sleeve that they can make use of. Another deck also doesn't have a huge amount of Pokemon Search. I think they just have a couple of great balls for the most part. But there is that Rainbow Spear attack, once again doing 100 damage and getting the knockout. And now it's going to be on us, so we're going to be promoting our Psyduck so that we can evolve into Golduck and start dealing some damage here. We are lucky enough to get into a Supporter, which is excellent. We can use Tate and Lisa to shuffle our hand into our deck and draw 5 cards, hopefully finding Empoleon or some other attackers. We do get a Ambipalm line, so we can definitely make use of that, as, as well as finding our Empoleon that we can evolve into, which is going to be a fantastic attacker for us. I think we'll also put down this Psyduck as it could be useful and we don't really need to make use of anything else here as I don't want to discard anything from my hand and we'll use Energy Loop to deal 80 damage and put one of our Water Energy back into our hand. Now on this following turn my opponents most likely are going to be using Rainbow Spear once again but if they do our Golduck has 110 HP so we will be able to sur survive this time and we can get a return knockout on our opponent. Dealing 80 damage with energy loop is more than enough to get the knockout here. We will be able to stay in this game, although my opponent will be slightly ahead in prizes at the moment. We will be levelling with them once we're able to make, take a knockout on this Xerneas. So my opponent just seeing what their options are here from the looks of things. I noticed that they didn't actually use Viridian Forest last turn, I don't think, and they once again didn't use it this turn. Maybe they just forgot or they don't realise that they can use it, but they should definitely be making use of Viridian Forest every single turn. So we're going to be attaching energy, evolving our Pokemon as well as using Cynthia here to get a fresh set of six cards so that we can have a good amount of cards in our hand to give us some options. We do get some good draw supporters here, but nothing else that we can particularly make use of. 
think we'll use Viridian Forest, discard this Apalm though. We don't need that at the moment. And we'll just get another Water Energy out of our deck, as well as make use of Energy Loop to get the knockout here, as mentioned, and put that Energy card back into our hand. Going down to four prize cards remaining, along with my opponent. And we do have the double roller skater, so we're going to be able to draw a huge amount of cards over the coming turns, which is excellent. We do unfortunately only have 10 HP remaining, so any attack really that my opponent uses is going to be getting a knockout here, which is a bit unfortunate. But we do have that Empoleon set up, as well as working towards using the Ambipom as well. But certainly the Empoleon is going to be doing a huge amount of work over these next coming turns and you're going to be able to see just how effective Empoleon is and why this deck is so strong. So my opponent goes for the knockout here with the Jigglypuff and the coin flip here of course doesn't matter whatsoever. And we could just get a knockout on this Jigglypuff considering they are able to deal an attack which paralyzes us on a coin flip. It's going to be pretty important to get a knockout on this as I don't want to get paralyzed and I really just want to be sniping things as much as possible and especially considering my opponent doesn't have a huge amount of really strong effective attackers I just want to get a knockout on this Jigglypuff. We could always use the Piplops attack actually to deal 80 damage to it so that's going to allow us to attach elsewhere on our board so we can put an energy onto Ambipom and as I mentioned we can make use of Roller Skater here, discarding a Water Energy card and drawing 4 cards, most of which are more energy cards which isn't the best but we can make use of Virgin Forest here perhaps I should have done that first but it's fine we're gonna have the same hand anyway and of course making use of Recall here and using Pitbull's attack for 80 damage to get the knockout and we're going to be able to go down to 3 prize cards remaining and we're in a very dominating position now. My opponent is going to be stuck on a whole host of Pokemon that has a very low HP as well as very low damage attacks. And they go for an Evolution Incense but they fail the search so perhaps they just don't want to get anything or they don't have anything in their deck which is very strange. And we see my opponent attacking with the Phantom, which is going to confuse us. And we do have the Switch in our hand available to us that we can definitely make use of and switch into a different Pokemon here. We could use the Pokemon Fan Club, but I don't think there's a huge amount of good Pokemon that we want to search out. I think we might as well go for it just to thin the deck. We were hoping to get a Piplop, but I remember that one of them is prized, so we unfortunately won't be able to get that. But we can definitely grab a Kyogre here as well as Puku Muku, just so that we can discard the Puku Muku. Definitely want to put the Kyogre into play though, as that's a great Pokemon to be attacking with. And we can attach an energy onto our Ambipom, as well as use Switch to go into the Ambipom. And let's just see, we could Viridian Forest, might as well discard an energy to get another energy. Then the deck once again. And this Pumpkaboo has 60 HP, so we only have to discard one card with Bye Bye Throw. We can discard the Puke Muku since we're not going to be needing it in this matchup whatsoever. The Puke Muku does have an attack which can do all damage, it does 60 damage, and you play Rock Paper Scissors with your opponent, and if you win, you deal an additional 60 damage. Definitely not worth it for the 3 energy attack cost considering we can deal equivalent damage with Ambipom. You do have to discard cards, but it's much more efficient dealing the damage with Ambipom, and you can just thin out the cards that you don't need anymore with Ambipom as well. So my opponent attached to the bench there, and they finally decide to use Viridian Forest themselves, discarding a Pokemon and searching out an energy card. They're just going to be hitting into us for 20 damage, which is definitely not a huge amount considering our board state. And this Ekans also has 70 HP, so they would be surviving if we discard a single card from our hand. We will have to discard two cards, but that's not too much of a big deal as we have plenty of cards that we can discard here. also want to start attaching energy to a Rokyogre, so that's going to be a great Pokemon to attack with. And we could always have our Empoleon ready to deal damage, which I think would be good uh, considering we are running low 
on cards in our deck, I think we can switch into our Empoleon and start dealing damage with that instead. We can use Tate and Lisa here to switch, keeps our energy on the board as well. And then we'll use Recall and deal the 80 damage with the Piplops attack, which is enough to get the knockout here and we can go down to one prize card remaining. Our opponent doesn't really have any options that they can do to deal enough damage to even get another knockout here. We can get a knockout on any of our opponent's Pokemon, dealing either 130 damage or we can snipe something for 100. We have a whole host of options with Recall. We just see another energy attachment onto the bench from our opponent. They do also have the evolution here onto the uh, Slurpuff. And the Slurpuff uh, has Sweet Veil, vale, which protects it from special conditions or any of your Pokemon that has fairy energy. But that is going to be game to our opponent. We can attach an energy onto the active and deal our 130 just to knock out the active because why not? And that shows just how versatile this deck is, being able to take a knockout on any the Pokemon that my opponent puts into us. Now in this matchup we are up against an extremely popular deck within the theme deck meta and that is the Team Up Charizard deck. It is certainly one of the most popular decks that showed up during the tournament and we can definitely try and make use of that since we have a type advantage being water and that is one of the main reasons why this deck did so well throughout the tournament as well as just being so versatile as I discussed earlier. Now we are at a little bit of a kind of shaky start here considering we don't have a draw supporter and our hand isn't looking the best. We do have the print plot and we even have Pokemon communication but I think we're gonna have to hope for our kind of deck to serve us well and get into some good draws here. We do get the Pokemon fan club off the top which is definitely a good pickup. I think we can get the Pukamuku to kind of search out some more Pokemon it's going to be a good option for us and even getting the Piplop as well. Definitely want to get another Piplop going. So we'll grab those two, put them into play and we can switch into the Puka Muku, put the energy on there and use Call for Family to get two more basic Pokemon onto the bench. We'll grab ourselves the Psyduck since we have the Golduck in our hand already and we could always get the Fion as well. A very good Pokemon to kind of mess with your opponent. Right, my opponent has the evolution, so they're working towards the Needle Queen, which will allow them to search their deck for any Pokemon of their choosing, and they will also be able to attack with it as they will want to try and cover their weakness by attacking with a non fire Pokemon, and in this case, that is Needle Queen. They also have the Ponyta and Rapidash combo. The Rapidash has Agility, which prevents any damage done to it if you get a heads on a coin flip. So we will be looking to try and establish our board, and really we want a draw supporter here so that we can get into an energy card and start attacking with Empoleon as quickly as possible. Now we do get an energy card. It could evolve into the gold up, but I think making use of the Pokemon communication here to grab ourselves the Empoleon. It's going to be our best bet so that we can start using the Recall attack. And this is where the deck really shines as you can use Recall to snipe 100 damage onto your opponent's bench Pokemon anywhere around their board. And it's just for a single energy attachment as well. So we definitely want to snipe down the Nidoran here. So we'll go for a direct dive and do 100 damage to the bench, take out that Pokemon before it becomes a Needle Queen, and even stop them from using it as an attacker. And we, excellent, we get our Water Energy from the prize cards, so we can use Recall again on the following turn and snipe down whatever Pokemon that we want. We could even go for one of the Fire Pokemon, but our opponent concedes, realizing that that is our strategy and they have no way of combating it.